So the weather's going to start cooling off pretty soon. It's time to start thinking about emergency heating. And today I have an option for you that's not only a heater, but a stove as well. This is the Camping Gear 2-in-1 portable isobutane heater and stove. All right, everybody, welcome back. So today I'm bringing you this Camping Gear this is a isobutane heater and stove. It can be used with propane as well with an adapter hose sold separately. And I think this is handy for a bunch of different reasons. Since it's almost the end of summer, it's time to start thinking about being warm again. And especially during emergencies or power outages, if everything is running electricity in your home and you don't have a fireplace, something like this could really come in handy. Now with that said, I don't want people to use this in small enclosed spaces. If you do decide to pick one of these up, I don't want you going into your bathroom, closing the door, and turning this on. Or if you live in an RV that's a small area, cranking this up and then going to sleep. There is the possibility with anything flammable like that, anything kind of, kind of flame from heat, that you could get carbon monoxide poisoning. So if you're going to use this in a house with very high ceilings and adequate ventilation like I have here, that probably wouldn't be a problem at all. Um, they are very, very conservative and have a lot of warnings on this particular item about don't use this indoors without ventilation. You know, I can't see it being any more dangerous than using a propane stove indoors, and I've done that in my house multiple times during power outages and emergencies. So, it is something to just be, think about and be careful about. However, it is a very budget-friendly both stove and heater. That's kind of cool. So... As far as the colors go, it comes in blue, orange, and purple. I chose blue just because I like a nice kind of mellow color. I didn't want it orange obnoxious or, or purple. I kind of like the, the blue on this. Uh, they say it's a navy blue. I would say it's more of a, just a dark blue. Uh, the maximum output on it is 9,000 BTU. It's got a unique 360 radiant heating design. So it'll keep you warm and cook your food as well. Now there's two ways to cook on this. We'll get into that in a second. But you do have a nice little controller right here. You can go up or down depending on how high you want it or how low you want it. And like with anything that's not super, super high-end, this can be touchy, okay? Not bad touchy, like to the point where it's unusable, but if you put it here and you think it's hot enough and you let it go, it might go down a little bit. So you always want to go a little bit over what you think that you're going to need to let go, and it'll go down. It's just the nature of the way these stoves are made. They're not uh, super high-end things, but it does work very well, and that method is very, very, very reliable. I've done it every single time I've used it so far. So the cool part about this stove, and the reason I um, picked it up, is because it uses isobutane. Um, I am trying to, with my outdoor gear, standardize to all isobutane canisters. I just think they're easier to carry than the big one-pound propane and, uh, you know, the um, other butane canisters that can be long and bulky. Um, I got a bunch of these recently from Gas One, and uh, they're smaller, they're the smaller ones, and they work very, very well for, you know, just tossing in your bag, have a stove with you, and you're good to go. And you do get a good, decent amount of time out of these, and you will get a good, uh, decent amount of burn time out of the smaller ones as well. So that's the cool part about this. It's kind of standardized now. I'm kind of getting more towards everything going isobutane for lightweight camping gear, not for end-of-the-world disaster. I still have tons of... Uh, propane stored. I still have tons of ice, uh, butane stored. Um, you know, when it comes to home use, I'll use whatever I can use. But when it comes to outdoor, camping, casual stuff, I'm trying to kind of keep all isobutane. You can look on the bottom here, and you can see where the isobutane canister screws in there. So it is kind of neat. Now, something weird about this, they say not to put the canister in with the stove upside down. In other words, don't turn it like this and screw the canister in. I'm not sure if that's because you might put it in there too, you know, too tight. Uh, there might be a leak and there could be a fire, whatever. They say not to do it. I'm not going to try it. Um, and another thing I noticed, too, with uh, certain isobutane canisters, I don't believe that middle needle is long enough to get into them. So you will have that issue as well. Um, I found with the gas ones and the other ones I've tried, they'll work very well. Even the Coleman ones will work very well. Some of my older Coleman ones didn't seem to... Pierce the, uh, pierce the can far enough down. So that's just something to think about. Make sure when you buy something that uses isobutane, you test it out and test out the inside as well. So here's the cool part about this. It's not only a heater, but it is a stove as well. Now, there's two ways to use it as a stove. So there's really three options with this. If I were to put the isobutane in here now and turn it up, that middle section would get nice and red. You'd have nice radiant heat all the way around. And you'd have a little heat coming out of here. 
If you want, you can cook up here too, and you can shut this off. There is a valve up here, not a valve, but more of a lever, that allows you to open and close this for heat. You can cook up there. I'm going to use the Stanley, uh, Stanley two-person cook set here, and you can see that just fits right on there perfectly. It won't boil as fast, it won't cook as fast, but it will work if you need the heat and the cooking as well. If you don't need the heat, here's the cool part. Just pop that off, and you have yourself a camp stove right there. So, definitely a cool little thing. You do have an air valve here that will allow you to go to minimum or maximum to let the air in. I have it about three quarters of the way near minimum. You don't want to turn it all the way up maximum. That seems to work very well for what I'm doing. And it also gives off a very nice bunch of heat. Now, they say this burner will deliver 9,000 BTU and boil water in, I believe, where does it say, 2, 5, 2 minutes 15 seconds. And I don't know about that, <laughs> but we'll see. We're going to try it out. It will also, in cook-only mode, I mean, in cook-only mode, it'll do 215. In uh, heat and cook mode, in other words, putting it like this and putting your camp pot on top, it'll do it in, I believe, it says 430, 4 minutes and 30 seconds. We're just going to try it like this, because i got a feeling it's going to be a little over 2 minutes and 30 seconds, but we're going to give it a try and see how it works anyway. So, first thing I want to do is put a canister inside there. Now, I know all of us are going to immediately go, oh, look, I can do it. No, they say not to do it that way. Again, I don't know why. Just make sure you line it up in there. Once it's lined up, you'll hear it kind of hiss. Oh, I didn't have it all the way off. You'll hear it kind of hiss some gas out. Um, not, not like that, because that was because I left it open. But you'll hear it hiss some gas out. Now, to light this is fairly simple. It doesn't have a piezo igniter, so you're really just going to turn it on and light. And there you go. Fairly easy to use, fairly simple. Um, with this on here, now you want if you're going to use it in the heat mode, you want to put this on first. I don't think it's a good idea to be messing around with letting it flop all over the place. Now, to put it on correctly, you have a little nub down here. You're going to have a little ball. That ball is going to go back into this section here. See that little hole? Okay. That's going to go in there, and this is going to go up here, and you're going to put those two pieces together and snap them into place. Once that's there, that's on there secure. That's not going anywhere. It does come with a way to pick it up when it's hot. There are two little holes on the side here. There's one, there's the other, and you can pick it up like that with the attached handle. It does have a little bit of a coil up here to keep it from getting too hot. Um, I would still be very careful. As you can tell, that's kind of close to where the heat is radiating. That's going to get warm. I'd still use gloves or something just to pick it up and be careful. Um, so, let's try it out with the heat mode first and see how we like that. And then we're going to try it out boiling two cups of water and seeing what the real times are and if they are accurate or not. All right, so I'm going to just turn it on. I'm going to put my lighter in there. And there we go. You will start to see that turn red inside. I'm going to kill the top light so you can see it better. And you are getting a nice bunch of heat off there if you want to turn the heat down a little bit. So you're not getting flame out of the top. Again, if you want a flame to come out of the top there, you can turn it up and cook on there too. But yeah, that's a nice radiant, you know, it's not obnoxious and it is warm in here right now because it's still summer. But it is a nice radiant heat. I can feel it coming off. So before that gets too hot, I'm going to let it cool down. And then we're going to try boiling water on it, just using it in cook-only mode. All right, so now comes the test. I got two cups of water. Actually, I got just a tiny little bit over two cups. Let me dump that out. There we go. So, once it's settled, I realize. So we got 16 ounces, 1.2 cups of water. We're going to put it in here. And I'm going to put it on the stove and try to synchronize when I put it on the stove to hit my start. And I'll show you the, the thing when it gets going there. That's a nice fit, too. That's not... Uh, Nice sturdy fit. That's not going anywhere. Okay, turning it up. Hit and start. Hello. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so we got it running. Let's see how long that takes. I'm going to turn it up a lot just to get the maximum out of it. And we're going to put the lid on. I'm going to see how well this rubber works on this lid. If you guys are interested, I will put the link down below to the Stanley two-person cook set. It's a neat little kit. comes with a bowl, a couple of sporks. If you're interested, you can check it out. Anyway, let me let this run, and I'll bring you back when I have boiling water. We're at 30 seconds right now. 31. 
So uh, we'll see if it uh, stands up to that 2 minutes and 15 seconds. I don't think it's going to, but we'll try so it. So we're at 1 minute 13 seconds. And already I'm starting to see bubbles popping up from it. So maybe it will make it. I don't know. I could be uh, I could be wrong. I'm already starting to see bubbles come up. I'm going to cover it up. Well, let's see if we can uh, get it around 2 minutes and 15 seconds. All right, you're going to have to color me impressed. I am at 2, two minutes and, let's say, nine, 9 seconds. And it is boiling like crazy. Let me lift you up. So you can see, I'm impressed. I didn't think it was going to do that. Let's turn it off. I am really impressed. I didn't think it was going to be able to pull that off. That is really, really quick. Gotta say, I didn't, I didn't expect it because it wasn't a... You know, like sometimes when you light up a little isobutane stove and it's like a blowtorch coming up. Um, it wasn't like that. It was just a mellow flame. But it seemed to kick butt and boil some water very, very quickly. I'm really impressed with that. Now, I did have it all the way up, so you got to remember that. I had it turned all the way up, so, you know... It's not going to do it on a low flame. And again, if you put the top on it, it's going to take longer because it's a diffused flame coming up through the top. So um, we know it's definitely going to take longer. That's the only reason I didn't test that. So I'm impressed with it so far. It's definitely putting out a nice bunch of heat. It definitely seems to boil water very well. And uh, it definitely does what it's supposed to do. Um, again, you know, you want to cool this off a little bit before you start messing around with it and taking your gas out. But another thing I noticed and I thought about here is with this heat coming down into the unit, your can down here, let me make sure that's cool, that is ice cold actually, your can down here is less likely to ice up. Um, you know how isobutane cans, if you stick them separate from a stove, if you've got a can remote canister stove or you put it down, in very cold weather they'll ice up very quickly. With the heat forced down on this with a pot on top, say, or with the top, with the heater top on it, it's going to keep that can a little bit warmer. I mean, it's not by any means hot under there, but it's going to keep it a little bit warmer and give you a little more burn time in a cold environment. So definitely pretty cool, i got to say. It even beat the time they said it was supposed to do. It gave me, a, let's say, 2 minutes and 11 seconds because I did start it late, about 2 seconds late. So that's pretty cool. So let me clean up this mess here, and we'll finish up. I'll give you the price where you can pick it up and the rest of the specifications on the item. All right, so we're all done. It's cooled off enough. I'm going to undo the canister from the bottom, and that's... Simple as unscrewing it. You will lick a little gas when you unscrew it, no problem. Now, to fold this up and to put it back into its sack, it does come with a nice little, you know, mesh bag for it. You're basically going to turn it upside down, place this part in here, and your handle on there, and just drop it into the bag. The bag is more than big enough. You could probably fit a couple of isobutane canisters in this thing, too. I'm actually going to put this on the bottom, like that. Then, just drop this in here, and it's ready to go on your next adventure, or ready for your next emergency, or whatever. I'm getting it caught on the, the feet, the pot stands. Alright, there you go. All done. Real simple, easy to put away. And there you go. So, definitely a cool little item. Again, if you use this with some intelligence, and you don't use this inside, say, a... Uh, little tiny room or a tiny little RV with no ventilation, you're going to do just fine with this. I don't want people to get too freaked out about carbon monoxide um, when it comes to stoves like this. I don't want you running generators in your house or anything like that. But as a general rule, something like that with adequate ventilations uh, and a nice high ceiling and a carbon monoxide detector, make sure you have a couple of those in your house. I keep one near my kitchen as well as in here. You know, I make sure that there's all over the place. There's one in the living room, there's one out here in the kitchen. I keep them around, that way you know if something's leaking. You'll be just fine. Once you hear a carbon monoxide detector go off, you want to stop what you're, what you're doing and air out the house and get out of the house. So, very simple to use. Really not um, too much on the weight department. It's 2.64 pounds. Uh, again, not a backpackable item. You know, you're not going to toss that in your backpack and bug out into the wilderness during some kind of end-of-the-world zombie scenario. But um, it's definitely a handy little system for car camping, uh, bug out location, maybe getting to your bug out location, you toss that in your vehicle so you can cook, maybe during just a simple power outage, you know, in your house. Um, as long, again, as long as you use adequate precautions, it's very, very, you know, manageable. So, definitely a cool little item. Now, the dimensions on the, uh, on the item itself, they're 7.6 inches by 7.6 inches across by 4.4 inches high. Your heating hood has 22 rails all the way around it, that heating little piece that sits on top. And the threaded valve, you know, it's the Lindell's typical threaded valve. Like I said, test your gas canisters out with this. 
This was kind of picky. There were a couple of gas canisters it didn't want to work with. So test your canisters out with it. Um, I found 99% of the canisters I have worked. Some of the older, like I'd say maybe two or three years old, um, Coleman big ones didn't work very well with it. But everything else worked perfectly. With the 230 gram canister of fuel, your burn time on this is going to be 1.5 hours at maximum. You're not going to run this at maximum all the time, especially for the heater mode. So you'll probably get a little bit, a little bit closer to two hours on that. And like we said, the boil time for just the stove itself was 215. They said we got two, let's say 211. Uh, cook only mode for that. The mode where you cook and heat with the heater on top of it was four minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, I bet you'd probably beat that a little bit too, but we'll see. All in all, I'm pleased with it. Now, the price on it, 56 bucks, 55.90. Um, not bad for a heater and stove combo. I mean, if you look at the Coleman heaters and stuff, uh, the catalytic heaters, they're just heaters. You have to go out of your way to make them a stove, you know? I mean, you really have to work hard to make that a stove. So, something like this, definitely cool. It has two purposes. You can use this while cooking something up or heating up some soup and heat yourself up too. So it's definitely a handy little item to use. So now's the time to start thinking about for your preps, keeping warm in the winter, extra blankets, maybe a heater, maybe an indoor safe heater like the Coleman, the, the Buddy Coleman heaters. Those are really, really good. Um, you know, you want to start thinking about that now before the rush starts and you get a cold day and then there's a power outage and everybody runs to the store, buys the store out and you never see them for six months. That's how things work now. And if you do decide to get this, make sure you stock up on isobutane that you know works with it. You don't want to stock up on a bunch of stuff that doesn't work. The reason I started this channel was to test my gear. I ran across a lot of things that I thought, ah, oh, this is a great idea. And then when I tested it on video, it didn't work as well as I thought it was going to be. So that's definitely a reason to check this out, buy it, and then test it with all the isobutane canisters you have. Find one it likes and buy them up. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. I will have a link down below where you can pick this up. It's on Amazon. If you have any questions, you can check Amazon if I forgot any stats or anything like that. Also underneath is our Amazon affiliate store. You can check out all the items that I have reviewed on this channel within reason. Some items aren't on the Amazon store. I will have a link to this two-person cook set on Stanley's site itself if you're interested in picking one of those up. Um, don't forget to check out our freeze-dried wholesalers link down below. If you guys are interested in freeze-dried wholesalers, I have a link. Com I have a video coming out tomorrow with all of their new meats. And this is interesting stuff. This is like bison and venison. So you're going to be interested in checking that out. If you click that link, you're going to save 15% on anything you buy from them. It's my personal link. So don't forget to click that link and save some money. And don't forget to check out our My Patriot Supply link. That's preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. I've noticed a lot of you folks buying stuff up there. Um, definitely getting a lot of traffic on that site. So if you're interested in getting some My Patriot Supply stuff, now's the time to do it before it gets sold out. And our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store down below. That's iridium242.thrivelife.com. Thank you for watching, folks. Make sure you stay warm, stay safe, and stay prepared.